had this idea I wanted to talk about um, because it's contrary to what we usually think and hopefully that makes us think or come up with something interesting. Namely that uh, balanced is a bad thing for roguelikes. And um, my main point is that balance is bad because uh, it prohibits interesting choices. Um, balance is not actually needed to preserve content to ensure people play all of your game. And um, balance is bad because it ends up encouraging people to grind the game and do these bottom feed-in strategies that are not fun. Um, so I'm going to look at different examples of balance first. Um, in item balance, when we think of two items being balanced, like a mace and a sword, usually you think they have the same damage per turn. And if there's any special abilities on one, there's going to be a disadvantage in the, in the uh, amount of damage per turn so that they both become sort of equivalent choices that are equally effective in combat. Um, with class balance, you've got a fighter and a mage, and the idea is if you get more hit points as a fighter, then well, that's because the mage gets more uh, magic abilities who can do something special. And so thus both classes will be equally difficult, and so they have the same chance of victory provided the players have the same skill playing that play type, um, but you know, they might have different tactics of how you should play them. Um, when we say a game is balanced, often the one at one point the, is usually those other things are balanced. But I also like to bring up the idea of game to game being balanced, namely two play sessions are equivalent to each other. So each time you start the game up, you're going to have the same chance of winning as you did the previous time. And this comes with the idea of fairness, namely that every time you play, you can win. And um, there's no ch cheap shortcuts where you can. Um, skip a lot of content and get to the end, you know, by running through a wall or something like that. So my first claim was that balance was bad for interesting choices. Um, interesting choices is an idea that we often bring up for what makes games fun. And we have two things you can do, A or B, and uh, a player that just wants to win. And if A is the same as B, in other words, they're actually balanced choices, then it's actually a meaningless choice because all you're really doing is picking flavor. It's like picking what name your, is for your character. No matter what name you have, it's going to have the same in-game effect, so it doesn't really matter what you pick. If A is better than B, then it's a trivial choice. You should always pick A, so you don't have any actual interest in part to it. So the, the one part that remains interesting is when the player doesn't really know if A is better than B, and that's interesting until the player gets good enough that they can categorize it into one of these two scenarios. And um, from this, I'm going to go and now look at some specific monsters in powder and how they're not balanced, but I think this is a good thing. Um, the kiwi in powder is this flightless bird, which uh, is not uh, aggressive by default, but it is, has no special rewards if you kill it. Um, it's the same experience level as other um, creatures that are weaker. And, uh, it's, and the entire point of it is just for players to decide not to fight it. And so the, um, the, the interesting thing they're trying to discover is, should I fight the kiwi? And this gets, uh, isn't even asked by beginners to just run into it and try and kill it it's on the map. And for experts, it becomes something trivial. Oh, I don't fight it, I just try and avoid it. Um, the next one is uh, skeletons and powder. These are another low-level monster. It's aggressive, unlike the kiwi, so you can't just ignore it. Um, but it has no special reward, yet it's more powerful than it really should be. And uh, the advantage of having a, a monster like this that's unfairly powerful is uh, then um, decisions about um, whether or not you use your special one-off abilities um, become more relevant because if you have a wand, you should use it on a skeleton. If you have a magic spell, you should use it right away with the skeleton um, rather than um, saving it for some future time. Whereas if, you, if all monsters were balanced equally powerful to each other for their level, you would have, wouldn't have a reason to um, conserve things. You should use it on the first monster because it's as likely to kill you as the next monster. And uh, then we have the final monster in powder, Weaselbub. And um, if you play the game slowly, he ends up being very weak um, compared to the other monsters you're fighting. And that's because you've leveled up a lot more than sort of expected for that character. Um, but then if the uh, if we made the uh, Beezlebug more powerful, 
then the uh, other players that might play the game very quickly would feel the need to grind up their ability to get powerful enough to fight them. And so you'd lose the ability to choose to die quickly rather than um, just uh, um, you know, going very slowly through the dungeon. Um, when we talk about unbalanced classes, there's a lot of uh, other things that suggest this is a good idea. NetHack makes a very big point about the classes being a sort of difficulty level. In other words, the fact that they're not, unba they're not balanced is a virtue. Tourists are supposed to be harder than uh, Valkyries. Um, and some would actually argue NetHack's not unbalanced enough. Namely, the classes all end up the same at the end. And it would be better if they're more unbalanced so that tourists remained harder throughout the entire game. Um, and then we come into the idea of, well, instead of classes as difficulty level, classes should be represented in play styles. And um, my response to that is that I, I don't like the idea of the player having to tell the computer what their play style is at the start of the game and then sort of stick with it. It's uh, sort of more like the idea of the play style being determined by the computer so they can just play the way they want to and then get the class that matches how they play. And that's what I try to do with Powder's God system where the, the idea is that the classes you're given to level up on are the ones that match how you're already playing. Um, rather than you having to say, I'm going to play as a rogue this game, and then hope that you um, actually do end up playing that way. So one of the big fears about having something unbalanced is if you have something that's a very poor risk versus reward, people will ignore it. If you find out Kiwis don't give you anything special for killing them, you're not going to stop fighting them. If you have a dungeon branch that doesn't give you anything good in that dungeon branch, you're just going to ignore it from then on. And uh, so all the effort you did was wasted. And so thus we should make sure every branch or possibility is equally enticing. The trouble is, is content is its own reward. People will go down that branch once to explore it. They'll want to know what's there. And also to find out that it was a bad risk for reward, they have to, that's part of the learning experience is to discover which things are worthwhile and which things are not. That's Choosing whether or not the A question B is A greater than B or A equals B is, is part of the learning of the game. Now, the fact that players do not stay there, I don't think should be considered a real serious problem. Because the, uh, if, if, it's, if it's use wants contents, then if it's been experienced, it hasn't been wasted. They don't have to keep experiencing over and over and over again for it to be worthwhile. They have to only experience it once. Um, and, if they, uh, and if the content alone doesn't drive them back to that branch, then why should we feel the need to keep dragging them there just to satisfy our own idea that that content was worthwhile? They should have, if they got the enjoyment out of it, let them move on to the other parts of the dungeon. This is sort of like the fact that when they finish the game, they want to move on to other games. They don't have to keep playing your game over and over again. They can go to different games. So why can't they just go to different branches and finish that branch? And finally, I'm going to bring up the fairness of games in general. Um, and Powder is a very unfair game. And it varies wildly in difficulty from play session to play session, because there's a lot of out-of-death out of monsters being generated easily. And uh, the random number generator um, means that there can be a lot of different quality equipment you can find on the early levels that really affect how hard it is. And um, so let's look at what happens if we had made powder more balanced. If the games are balanced compared to each other, um, then every game should be winnable. So you've got some sequence of actions that you can figure out trivially to sort of solve that game. And uh, the trouble is that usually means there's some cautious, safe, and sort of bottom feeding strategy which lets you win the game. It's sort of like a grinding type approach to winning the game. So how do we deal with the fact that this grind, grind path exists? Well, one option is to embrace it. And um, I'd say Angband and Diablo sort of do this, where they focus on a good grind, you know, the enjoyable grind, where you know, all the decisions you face, you sort of can figure out what the right thing to do is. But it's taken all your concentration to make this decision. So it's, it's a fun zone to be in. You get into the zone, you play the game, and you can just, just play it. But what you're doing is very much a repetitive grind approach. The other approach is to ignore it, which is what I'd say NetHack sort of does, where you know you say, okay, yeah, you can put in farm, but 
don't do that. There's better uses of your time in the world. And uh, so it's a naturally um, natural safe thing that you won't, won't keep doing that unless you want to. And um, if people waste their real world time because they're trying to win your Skinner box, is that a real problem? Well, I don't know. I, I kind of think it might be a real problem where we shouldn't be encouraging people to waste their time. The other approach is to make it unprofitable. Because if this grind, bottom feeding strategy can be identified and removed from the game, then what's left is just the sort of um, difficult playing strategies, which are the ones we want people to actually play. And this is what crawl has been working very hard on doing. And um, it's, it's a very difficult goal because there's a lot of different ways to bottom feed and a lot of different thing, loopholes you have to close. The other strategy I suggest is to be unfair. If you're unfair and unbalanced, um, grinding becomes unprofitable automatically. In powder you can do pillar dancing, you can do hack and retreat, you can sit on level 1 killing monsters forever because you, you know, food doesn't run out, you don't die of lack of food. But the problem is, the longer you play, the more chance you have of catastrophically bad things happening. Um, out of depth monsters, too many bad encounters in a row, um, bad rolls on um, certain certain things. And so, and so the, the longer you keep playing, the more you have this sort of chance of instant death almost, you could see it as being, or unavoidable death. And uh, another seven day roguelike which sort of explored this concept was the favored, um, where you're trying to collect all these rabbits to win the game. But any particular kill of a rabbit has a certain chance of just instantly killing you. And otherwise you instantly kill the rabbit. So it's like each, you, you don't know when that's going to come, so you have to minimize the number of rabbits you fight. So this is sort of an attempt at a power curve to show where I see this working with power. You have this sort of level here in Cyan, which is the safe power level. When you get to that level, you can encounter um, basically that risk of instant death due to bad luck goes away. Because you get powerful enough, you have enough resources, you can deal with anything the game can throw at you. Um, the, the, the blue arrow, is what happens if you do a sort of power dive, where you're just trying to um, get more items and go deeper and uh, not trying to do anything particularly safe. You're playing more recklessly. The red arrow is you're doing some safe grinding type approach of farming, farming uh, monsters that are easy or something like that. So you grow in power slower, but the idea being you have less risk while you're growing in power. The trouble is you're spending more time in this unsafe region. And the longer you spend in that unsafe region, the longer, the more likely you are to be killed by um, bad luck. So, uh, yeah. well, what you're saying, in a way, isn't it that uh, the end game in powder is uh, easier than the beginning, or less dangerous than the beginning? Yeah, it's definitely easier than the beginning. Because okay. um, as soon as you get to that safety point, you have enough experience and enough uh, uh, items that you can yeah. deal with most things. Because Normally it's, it's uh, the other way around. Normally the, the game gets more difficult as you play it. Not like NetHack. <laughs> I'm more from the NetHack tradition yeah, where okay. you know you hit the castle and then look, here you go. And yeah. uh, with Powder it's very much the idea being that when, you, when you've won the game it's an easy walk back to the surface. So, okay. so I just ran some numbers here to see if what I said made any sense. Namely, if uh, you say it takes 30 minutes to get to the safe zone, doing a power dive, and 60 minutes if you grind slowly, and you have a chance to die per minute of, let's say, 1%. Um, and let's say power diving is more risky. You've got a 20% chance of dying because you power dive, but a 0% chance of dying because you did a slow grind. Um, then if you look at your chance of actual victory, um, the power diver is a 59% chance of victory, but the grinder is 55% chance of victory. So these are just completely random numbers, but they're just to show that there can be an inversion where, with certain certain setups, where because it's a unsafe, unfair um, game, you can't afford to take the safe path because no matter how safe you make the path with your decisions, there's this built-in risk that will always be there that you can't fall below, and so you have to play risky in order to um, get to a, that safe level fast enough to be able to, uh, to win the game. Otherwise, you will just stay in that unsafe area and eventually the um, odds will catch up to you. 
And um, so I think that's my summary, which is that uh, I, I think balance is, like having truly mathematically balanced items is a bad thing because then you have no reason to pick one over the other. So there should be unbalanced for the users to discover so they can realize, oh, I want to use a mace rather than a long sword because it is a better thing. They can actually learn that. And um, in some ways, once you've learned all of those unbalanced results is when you're done the game because you now know how to play it properly, what the correct path is. The other idea is that uh, content is its own reward. So if you have content in the game that is sort of unbalanced so people don't use it, well, if it's something they can explore, they'll probably explore it once or twice, and that's sort of, you, you should be content that that was the extent that that content contributes. And the last one is, um, the, if a game itself is, is a balanced game, like a fair game, there's going to be some safe strategy. And so you're going to have to work hard to deal with this grinding through one of these approaches. But if you make the game inherently risky, then you've, you've automatically cut off uh, a lot of the grinding type possibilities without having to do any code or um, special case in the different things. So that's my thing. Um, your last conclusion is only correct if you don't have a clock in the game that drives the player. For example, in Rogue, there's the food clock. You have to, to dive further to get food or else you die. Wait, let's pause it. Ah, sorry.